Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about what's known as Spoonets, a new unusual hypothetical planetary object that the scientists believe may exist somewhere out there in the universe. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Okay, first of all, Plunets? What is a Plunet? Now, it is a kind of a cute name, but when you think about it, it does sort of make sense. Plunets refer to objects that became planets after being a moon of another object. So basically, planet, moon, Plunet. The actual concept is still hypothetical, but it's based on very thorough simulations and also observations from various star systems where we've detected some unusual spectrometric um, parameters that didn't really make sense. So in other words, we believe that they do kind of exist somewhere, but we just haven't really found them yet. However, this particular paper that was released in June of 2019 goes on a very thorough analysis and also, well, in some sense speculation, but more of an explanation on what we should be looking for or looking at when looking for these planets. The uh, paper is based on various simulations, a very thorough analysis, and very specific explanations for why these scientists believe that somewhere out there, there are a bunch of planets orbiting around stars. So first of all, let's try to briefly simulate what they uh, try to do in the study. For the most part, they believe that the majority of these planets would be forming around objects known as hot Jupiters. These are very, very massive planets, usually more massive than Jupiter itself, and are relatively close to the parent star. There's a lot of them we've discovered in the galaxy, but we just don't have any in our own solar system, so we can't really test this theory. And here, um, if this object has a moon, or even several moons like the one I just found in Space Engine, then um, assuming that it's close enough to the parent star, it might reach a point close enough to the star where both the star and the planet will start playing a kind of a game of tag uh, with each other and try to dislodge the moon that the planet has. In other words, the orbital parameters of this particular moon are going to change dramatically and it's going to end up leaving the planetary system. Just to give you a visual example, here is the moon Io. It's in orbit around this relatively massive hot Jupiter that I placed. And because it's so close to the sun, at some point uh, the sun is going to start pulling at it so much that it's going to escape and become its own object. Now, it might take a while for this to happen, and will usually depend on how much stress the object receives to begin with, but there are several conclusions to um, what happens when it becomes a planet. The most common resolution is most likely going to be this. It's going to possibly escape and become its own object. So now you can see that it's basically a planet around the new sun, with a very eccentric orbit. So this is kind of what a planet would be like. The scientists in this paper provided very specific light signatures that we should be looking for uh, if looking for these objects known as planets. So as you can see, this is one potential resolution to this scenario. And the other resolution is that some planets might end up, um, unfortunately, falling back into the planet and getting swallowed by it. This is also um, another potential resolution here, mostly because the planet is still much closer to the uh, planet than the star is, so it's very likely that some of them, or maybe even many of them, will probably just get swallowed back. And the last resolution here is obviously that some of these planets uh, that get kicked out from the planetary system might end up on the intersection course with the star itself, and essentially gets swallowed by the star instead of the planet. So here, this is what's going to happen. It's going to slowly fall apart and then eventually fall into the star. But I guess the interesting part here is that, so how would we ever detect these objects? Well, the scientists behind this paper believe that as these planets go through this transition, they will most likely, uh, due to the uh, tidal pressures from the star, lose most of their atmosphere and a lot of their mass and this will create a very specific very unique light signature that we're going to be able to detect and that's of course because this transition is so stressful for this tiny planet that um, it will most likely completely change its parameters removing any atmosphere that it had but also removing a lot of its mass so it might have very unusual light signatures that uh, would probably not make sense otherwise and these light signatures from these unusual formations 
would be very distinct and very unique, so that there's probably no other explanation other than a planet being formed. And what's even more interesting is that uh, following the simulations, the scientists were able to determine that some of these planets can stay in these orbits, relatively stable orbits, for potentially millions and millions of years. Some of them were hundreds of millions of years. And um, even though a lot of them would probably not be able to last that long, there's going to be at least a few of them that do survive. Especially the ones like this one right here that we were able to uh, establish a very eccentric orbit and not really come close to the star or the planet and move to a relatively far and stable, safe location far away from the uh, hot Jupiter and from the star. The simulations also suggested that some planets might even be able to capture some of the gas from the star itself and accumulate enough uh, material to potentially reform their atmosphere and create some sort of a gas-like mass to once again become a planet-like object. In other words, these planets could reform into actual planets. Now for this accretion to occur, obviously there has to be a lot of gas um, orbiting around the star and the planet needs to be able to somehow capture it, but all of this could happen somewhere out there in the galaxy. However, the simulations also show that the vast majority of these objects, unfortunately, don't really live that long. Within about a million years, most of them disappear completely, one way or another. And what's interesting is that some of these objects even got ejected completely from the star system, becoming so-called rogue planets. So it is kind of possible that some hot Jupiters, or maybe even a lot of hot Jupiters, used to have moons, possibly even a lot of different moons, and it's very likely that as they approach the star, many of these moons got ejected into the rest of the galaxy and are now their own little objects moving through interstellar medium completely alone, completely by themselves. Now it's very likely we'll probably never really see these objects because it's also possible that they're super super dark, very small and very difficult to observe. But just the fact that they could exist out there does make it kind of interesting. And considering the fact that objects like Jupiter, for example, have a lot of moons to begin with, it's also possible that hot Jupiters have a lot of moons. And if they do, some of these moons do probably escape, and some of them probably turn into these unusual objects known as uh, planets. So once we find a way to look for these objects, we'll probably be able to find at least one of them. But for now, I think it's more important to at least find an actual exomoon of an actual planet. And we'll talk about one potential discovery in one of the future videos. So do come back and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences. And come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. And space out, and as always, bye-bye. And by the way, it looks like by placing around 10 different moons here, I created at least two stable planets and several objects here uh, decided to leave this star system or at least have a very eccentric orbit and two decided to remain as moons. So this simulation does prove that these planets could definitely exist.